Hi, I'm Sally Weldon Mulford, and my background is in virology. And I'm happy to be here today to talk to everyone about virus titration assays. The virus titration assay is the standard in the field of virology for quantitation of infectious foci. And while the assay may be standard, viruses are anything but standard. Some viruses are cytopathic and can be readily seen with the naked eye or using a low power microscope. Other viruses are either minimally cytopathic or non-cytopathic and require detection using visible stains or labeled specific antibody. Regardless of the virus you work with, the assay is labor intensive and the results can be difficult to interpret. I'll explain the advantages of Lycor's instrumentation, the virus titration application in detail, how the application can be validated with your virus and your laboratory conditions, and how the quantitative data will benefit you. What makes the Odyssey Imager so special? Lycor Odyssey Imagers utilize near-infrared based scanning, which provides high signal-to-noise ratios and a wide range of sensitivity. Autofluorescence from biological molecules, membranes, and plastics, as well as light scatter, are dramatically reduced in the near-infrared region. The difference can be clearly seen in this photomicrograph of Crandall feline kidney, or CRFK, cells infected or mock-infected with feline panleukopenia virus, or FPV. In the panel on the left, the virus is detected with the visible fluorophore, FITC, labeled primary antibody, while the panel on the right is the uninfected control. In this panel, FPV-infected cells are detected using unlabeled mouse anti-FPV antibody and a near-infrared labeled IR dye 800 CW goat anti-mouse secondary antibody. The panel on the right is the control. The background fluorescence is dramatically lower in the near-infrared detection and the signal-to-noise ratio is superior, resulting in a sharper, clearer image. Let's take a look at the application in detail. The workflow is straightforward and can be altered to suit your particular requirements. The direct labeling approach requires a primary antibody, while the indirect approach utilizes an unlabeled primary antibody coupled with a labeled secondary antibody. The assay can be performed in a variety of formats suitable to the virus under study. Higher throughput can be achieved by taking advantage of the multi-well reading capability of the large scan bed of the Odyssey CLX. How does the assay work with the Odyssey? We use cytopathic FPV and CRFK cells as our model system to compare and confirm near-infrared results versus manual reading of plates using both light and fluorescent microscopy. Parallel plates of CRFK cells were infected with tenfold dilutions of FPV incubated until cytopathic effect became apparent. For near-infrared detection, plates were immunostained with an unlabeled antibody to FPV and detected with IR dye 800CW goat anti-mouse antibody. The plates were scanned on an Odyssey imager and also examined using a light microscope. A second plate was stained with the visible FITC-labeled polyclonal anti-FPV and manually read using a fluorescent microscope. The results were confirmed by examination of the wells by light microscopy. Under light microscopy, the 10 to the minus 4 and minus 5 dilutions have the highest number of virus particles and infected cells present per well. The number of virus particles decreases in the wells receiving the 10 to the minus 6 and minus 7 dilutions, and the number of viruses in the 10 to the minus 8 through minus 11 dilutions falls to zero. The highest dilutions have confluent monolayers, and FITC immunostaining of the same plates indicated that there were no detectable virus particles above the 10 to the minus 7 dilution. The lowest dilutions, 10 to the minus 1 through minus 3, were also confirmed by light microscopy to have no cells to few cells per well, indicating overwhelming CPE. 
Here's an example of what the near-infrared scan plate looks like in our model system. The 10 to the minus 4 and minus 5 dilutions, which have the highest number of virus particles and infected cells, correspond to the highest intensity values. The intensity decreases in the wells, receiving the 10 to the minus 6 and minus 7 virus dilutions, and the intensities for the minus 8 through minus 11 dilutions fall to background levels. Light microscopy and FITC immunostaining of parallel plates confirmed there were no detectable virus particles above the 10 to the minus 7th dilution. The lowest dilutions, 10 to the minus 1 through 10 to the minus 3, always display the outer ring or bullseye effect due to overwhelming CPE and lack of cells, but the green fluorescence indicates the presence of virus. The assay plate on the previous slide was set up diluting the virus tenfold, 11 dilutions total with 8 replicates per dilution, including an uninfected control. After the plate is scanned, the data is arrayed as a signal intensity per well. The uninfected wells on the left are first averaged and the standard deviation determined. The threshold value for the positive signal is set as the average of signals of the uninfected wells plus three times the standard deviation. In this case, the threshold value is 11.88. To determine the numbers of infected wells, dilutions 10 to the minus 1 through minus 3 were always scored as 8 out of 8 wells positive in our model due to CPE. The rest of the plate was scored as the number of wells with values greater than the threshold value out of eight wells per dilution. The titer was then calculated using the Spearman-Carber equation. The largest dilution with 100% CPE was 10 to the minus 6. The dilution factor is 10, and the sum of the fractions beginning at 1 is 1.25. The inoculation volume is 0.1 mils, therefore the titer is calculated as 10 to the 8.05 TCID50. Here are the results of the multiple comparisons of FITC labeled plates manually read using a microscope on the left versus indirect near-infrared labeling and scanning on the Odyssey imager on the right. The results are 10 to the 7.9 TCID50 for FITC and 10 to the 7.7 .7 TCID50 for near-infrared scanning. A two tailed paired t-test applied to the data confirmed that the differences in the titers between the two methods were not statistically significant. To demonstrate the relevance of the assay for non-cytopathic viruses, we also tested bovine viral diarrhea virus types 1 and 2 stocks on bovine turbinate cells. The experiment was performed in 96 well plates in quadruplicate with one set of plates using an FITC conjugate primary antibody and manually read using a fluorescent microscope, while the parallel plates use an unlabeled antibody and an IR dye 800 CW labeled secondary antibody. The titer data obtained for both virus types were comparable to the data obtained by laser scanning. The reproducibility of the assay is essential for validation and transfer of the assay from your visible fluorophore to the near-infrared assay method. This is easily accomplished using dual-labeled antibodies and testing on the same plate. In this table, we show a combination of the visible dye, Alexafluor 488, and IR dye 800CW dual and single-labeled goat anti-mouse secondary antibodies, and FITC and IR dye 800CW dual-labeled secondary antibodies, along with an IR dye 800CW single-labeled antibody for control to check for reproducibility. As you can see, the results are the same for the scanned and manually read plates. The difference in the single label controls are within plus or minus 0.3 to 0.7 of the log mean titer of the appropriate dual labeled molecule. The data conformity across different instruments and different label types indicates the ease of transfer and validation of the assay. In addition to the virus titration assay, serum neutralization assays, both alpha and beta types, can be performed with this method. Here we illustrate an example of the beta SN using a 1 to 100 dilution of FPV for all wells except the uninfected control wells and varying dilutions of antibody. 
This test is usually performed to determine vaccine potency using dilutions of animal serum as a source of antibody. The diluted serum is added to a constant amount of virus, mixed, and then added to uninfected cells. Any virus not blocked by the binding of specific antibody can infect the cells. Virus blocked by the antibody is neutralized. The infected cells and virus in the wells on the plate are then immunostained with anti-FPV and detected with IR dye 800CW secondary antibody using the workflow described earlier, and the plates are then scanned on an Odyssey family imager. The neutralizing ability of the serum, called the neutralizing index, is calculated using the method of Spearman and Carber. As before, the threshold value is calculated using the uninfected control wells. In this example, the threshold value is 7.14. The highest dilution where all the virus in the wells are neutralized is the 1 to 75 dilution. The 1 to 150 dilution shows one out of the eight wells neutralized, or the fraction 0.14. Therefore, the SN calculation is the negative log of the dilution factor minus the log of the inoculation volume, 0.1 mil, divided by 2, plus the log of the inoculation volume multiplied by the fraction of the wells neutralized, beginning with 1. The result is 10 to the 2.068. The inverse log is 117. Therefore, the neutralizing index of the serum is 117. The flexibility and the benefits of this assay for you are many. The low autofluorescence provides a high signal to noise ratio and a wide range of sensitivity, while the plate scanning eliminates the subjectivity of human bias and error. The data is archived as a digital image with the quantitation arrayed in a numerical format, so it's available for you now or in the future. The assay is highly reproducible across various labels and instrument types, so your validated visible assay is easy to transfer to near-infrared using dual-labeled antibodies on the same plate or on parallel plates with single visible labeled antibodies or near-infrared labeled antibodies. The assay is flexible and can be adapted for use in serum neutralization assays. Higher throughput can be achieved in two ways, using the multi-plate scanning on the Odyssey scan bed or on the Odyssey SA with the plate stacker option. That's all the information I've prepared for you today. If you're interested in more detailed information, I've published a paper in the Journal of Virological Methods titled Quantitation of Virus Using Laser-Based Scanning of Near-Infrared Fluorophores Replaces Manual Plate Reading in a Virus Titration Assay.